Hello everyone and welcome to today's major markets update. A very warm welcome, January 11th, 2023. Before we get started, yesterday I did a interview with Forex Analytics and uh, I shared this chart where I wanted to outline the importance of stop losses. So we have two traders, A and B, let's say your neighbor and you, and you both buy a security at $100 for $100,000 each. So you buy a thousand shares of each of these securities. Now you sell at $90 for a 10% loss, which means that you have $90,000 left. Meanwhile, your neighbor uh, holds no matter what, right? He's a hodler, a buy and holder, a diamond hands, whatever you call it. Now, eventually, the security bottoms at $10 and then rallies to $200. Okay. And we both wanted to get a double of our profits. So the goal was to sell at $200. Now, you use an analyst to rebuy the security at $50. You can use me, for example. Now, I'm not going to claim I'll get you into 10 bucks. Probably more closer to 20, 30, maybe 40, but $50 is very conservative, right? We already had a 50% rally. And if you know my work, you know that by then I'm starting to get pretty bullish. And you sell at 200. So you have quadrupled your money. So you went from 90,000 or 9,000 or 900 or whatever the number is to 36, 360,000, whatever the number is. Quadrupled your number. Meanwhile, your neighbor is parading the streets. Look at me, look at me. I'm so good. He might not still not sell, but he now has $200,000. That's all he has. So he pretty much still has the Honda CRV on the driveway, and you can start to, to look at a Ferrari. That's the difference. This is the only difference that matters and why you need to adhere to stop loss. So if you take the 10% loss, then have the patience to sit there in your hands, wait for it to bottom out you'll get a fantastic new opportunity for a very low risk, high reward trade. Meanwhile, that 9,000, 90,000, whatever it is, dollars you had could also be put into uh, action while this security kept ratcheting lower, okay? So while your neighbor was anxious, see his whole fortune go from 100,000 to 10,000, and probably gets stressed out, yells at his wife, bites his nails, kicks the dog, all those things, you are sitting on your hands and maybe put your money in something else and actually at the end of the line, when we get back to 50, already have 100,000 again because you made up the 10,000 you just left by trading. That's why you have analysts on your side. That's why you need to listen to stop losses. Cut those losses short. That's what we do. Okay, even if you went through three 10% stop losses, you'd still have, um, let's say, a little over 70,000 because 90,000, 9,000, etc. A little bit over 70,000. You buy it at 50, you would still end up with 280,000, almost 300,000, still more than your neighbor has. Okay, that's the power of small losses. Big losses and big drawdowns don't get you anywhere. So your neighbor is all cocky. Oh, look at me, look at me. He's got nothing compared to you because you got all the dry power. I really want to stress this. I really want to stress this. This is so important. Few people understand this, okay? What people also don't understand is the variability of leading diagonals. Please see my Twitter of today, but that's something else. We always follow the evidence. We set about with a primary expectation and when the evidence changes we change it according the primary expectation is for example a standard impulse if that is not going to appear uh, then we are going to change our mind and look for something else that is the power of edit wave when we get invalidation below certain price levels we for example know the impulse path is not going to happen when we don't see five up but three up we know it's corrective or part of a diagonal all those good things uh, that will prevent us from a lot bigger damage to our portfolio, okay? That's what we're trying to prevent, damage to our portfolio. Oh, and by the way, the $10,000 loss is a tax deduction if you don't get caught in a wash sale. But most of the time, it takes quite a while from going from 100 to a 10, okay? By the time you rebuy it at 50, I'm pretty sure your tax loss or your loss is tax deductible. So not only... <laughs> Will you end up with 360,000 at the end of the road? You can also deduct 10,000 from your income, which reduces your taxable income by probably around 30, 40%. Boom, your neighbor got nothing, okay? That's the power 
no questions asked. Anybody who's against this, you know, I'm not going to say anything. Big picture, here we go. We're still in the big picture. We're still trying to figure out um, the starting gates of this Black Wave Sea. We're still in the starting gates of this Black Wave Sea. It's looking good. We get upside surprises and downside disappointments. So let's start with the Dow. Yesterday, it pretty much bottomed exactly where it should have for this green wave four, and we're already making new highs. So I think we're in green wave five. Alternative is that this is turning into a, um, I would say kind of flat wave four. It all depends on how the market is going to react till to, to tomorrow's uh, CPA uh, or CPI inflation data. Uh, but so far, the market is rallying and it is adhering to this um, um, standard ideal Fibonacci-based impulse path really well. So ideally, we should rally to this target zone. So maybe we get a nice pop tomorrow uh, into uh, the open and sell off for the rest of the day. Who knows? That seems to be uh, the case, I must say, because we bought it where we had. So this is where you can use excuse me, my target zones for buying and selling. This was the target zone here. We reached it uh, once, twice, three, four, five times, almost like one, two, three, four, five. And unfortunately, this correction became very complex. That we cannot foresee. We go with a simple ABC and then the market can decide to subdivide. As I say, after three waves lower, expect at the minimum three waves back up because the zigzag can be turned into a flat, a three, three, five, which can be turned into a double flat whatever it wants to do since then uh the january five low we have been impulsing higher for wave three we reached the ideal wave three target zone we've reached the ideal wave four target zone for trading you buy here you sell there you buy here you sell there there's nothing else to it okay that's been quite some nice trades if we then look at the daily chart um oops <laughs> the price section go here we can see we've reached the ideal target zone to the T, reached the ideal target zone to the T, and we should now be in this wave five of one. And then we're going to bottom out and probably drop back to uh, about this week's lows for wave two before we start uh, the next rally. This is the 100. Also here, topped in the ideal three target zone, bottomed in the ideal four target zone, and should now be on its way for this ideal wave five. Alternatively, this wave three here is still subdividing, okay? But beggars can't be choosers. So that is four and then that is five. And then we had a very complex long drawn wave two and a very simple wave four, fast and furious, I must admit. Um, not necessarily my preferred point of view, but it is what it is. We topped and we bottomed where we had to and we are now on our way to our target zone. On, um, Time frame similarly to the Dow Jones, topped where we had to, bottomed where we had to, should now be on our way to where we had to at around 11,500 for this wave one. So then this green path is filling in, we'll get the red path subsequently. So, so far, so good. If we get this through five waves higher, even if I'm off by one degree, I'm fine with it, meaning that there's another three, four, five, or four, five pattern to go, it's fine. I st still think we'll reach these higher levels into the low to mid 13,000s. Semiconductors also behaving very nicely. And this one I'm upgrading to a three, four and five uh, based on the pullback we had uh, earlier this week. This looks better as a one, two, one, two, three, four, three, four, five um, reaction. It would also look better on the hourly time frame. Uh, remember, I said this is three, this is four, uh, alt three, alt four. It's fine with me as well. But we should now be on our way uh, into the high 2700s for either all of wave three or all of wave five to be determined. But again, the more ways we start to wrap up, the more likely it is we're going to reach this wave one high. But I would like to see the three, four, five. I haven't changed any of these labels um, after. Um, the recent price action, remember, I had these green arrows here. You can still see some of the leftovers and upgraded that to the red arrows. And so far, it's following this path. I like it. So then one, we get a pullback for wave two, uh, probably back to about 2600, 2650, ideally. And then uh, it is blast off time. So the primary expectation remains that we are in a uh, intermediate term 
bull run, a counter trend rally within a large bear market. See no reason to change it. S&P 500. So this was the original wave count um, I had. Well, the very original one, it's of course, uh, here that we uh, were looking for this expanding uh, leading diagonal. But I already said based on, on Friday, based on the other indexes and based on the fact that this uh, price action went too far, I didn't like it anymore. So anticipate it. All right. Even last Tuesday, we were still so sideways, I couldn't decide was it still going to go lower or higher. But we then saw how the market was filling in this expanding leading diagonal path. So that remained to preferred. Uh, then already on Friday, I said I start to smell that this is going to extend higher based on the other indexes, and that has not proven me wrong. So this has not been the preferred count anymore. We went to this um, expanded count. So we have potentially topped for a wave five of three, and then I was looking for the A, the B, and the C. Well, we've gone too high, so we're most likely uh, now in either. Um, this one, we are still in wave three, we get a four and a five, or we have indeed topped for three, topped bottom for four, now on our way for a wave five. The upside target is here at around 4,000. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Um, again, we, we might just see a little pop here. So the four to five, I believe, matches with um, that of the Dow Jones and matches reasonably well with that of the NASDAQ 100. So there is definitely credence to the fact that we might already uh, be on our way for this wave five of one. So then yesterday was um, pretty much wave A, B, and C. Okay, we, we rallied, we dropped, uh, and then we rallied into today's high. Wouldn't surprise me if this is the case. Okay, please remember, uh, Diagonals are very tricky. This is a diagonal in 2020 for the S&P 500. Okay, look how messy it is, but this was a diagonal. Now, normally diagonals would retrace, in this case, all the way back here from about 3250 back to 2450. Didn't get it. We only got this little retrace here in 2020. So we bottomed here in March 2023, COVID low, and then all we got was this. All right, so this was wave one and this was wave two, period. So this is a leading diagonal wave one. Then we have the NASDAQ here a year earlier, August 2019. Look at this leading diagonal. Five waves up, okay, three waves down, three waves up, three waves down, three waves up. Oopsies, this is something entirely different. Kind of looks the same, but it's different. Also, this was a leading diagonal. What kind of leading diagonal was this? This was a actually a three and then a three and then a five quite different in my humble opinion but i think leading diagonals are extremely variable please remember mr elliott in the 1920s and 1930s had only one or two um, examples in the data of the dow jones for diagonals so very limited when frost and prechter wrote their book and expanded on uh, mr elliott's work i think they had maybe a handful half a dozen to a dozen diagonals to work with that's it they originally proposed leading diagonals were only threes and ending the angles were only three, something like that. That has then since been updated. And I think now with 20 to 30, 40 years more data, we have a much larger database on diagonals. When the evidence changes, we change accordingly. When more data becomes available, we change accordingly, okay? Um, it takes one to disprove all. That's what Einstein said, okay? Einstein, uh, Einstein found out the, the, the relativity theory, and there were 100 scientists against it. Well, he was right. All right. Galileo Galilei found out that the sun was not the center of the universe, um, but <laughs> that we were just revolving around, or that, that Earth was not the center of the universe, but that we were revolving around the sun. All right. He got pretty much <laughs> executed for it, well, house arrest for the rest of his life. But he was right. So we have the potential for a more variable leading diagonals than currently is in the books. If we find that evidence, we update the books accordingly. And uh, that's really all there is to it. So please remember, if we are in this diagonal, it is quite variable. We can already find four different examples, three, 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 five, three, five, three, five, uh, uh, variations on that. So it's, it's tricky. So we're still in the starting gates of this B wave, and I'm still waiting for a larger multi-day, maybe even multi-week pullback to allow us for a much uh, 
better low risk buying opportunity. So we're still figuring out the details of this wave one, of wave C, of wave B. After wave one comes two, and after two comes three, and three is the one you really want to um, make the money in. So we're trying to figure this out. I like this five uh, on the S&P 500. Uh, as, uh, again, it kind of matches here with the NASDAQ 100, and it matches also very well with the Dow Jones. Okay. So again, we might get a pop and a drop tomorrow. Wouldn't surprise me if that is the case. Um, alternatively, so we still have three, we get the four and we get the five, we can still move a little bit higher. Um, this would be really diagonally all threes. That's what people like to see. The sticklers do um, uh, uh, the true um, conservative way, I would say, of looking at uh, diagonals. But if one studies the, the markets and the data that we have currently available, uh, I think, again, a, an update is, is warranted to this very variable pattern because I clearly showed you two paths uh, that have manifested themselves uh, over the last few years, and we need to take that into consideration. So here's the IWM. It keeps extending. Um, the ideal diagonal target was this zone, and we moved above it. So I think we're in three, a four, and a five. Okay. Um, this pullback here was then four, and then we should be at five. Again, uh, sometimes diagonals can be quite tricky to figure out because of their variability in nature. But I think we can move higher, pull back, and then um, an another rally. But bigger picture, remember, as long as we hold the December lows, we're good. Bigger picture wise, look at this massive positive divergence on the bullish percent index for the NASDAQ. So we've gone lower over the last few months, lower lows. Right, but higher highs of higher lows in the na bullish percent index. So the lower things went, less stocks were participating to this decline. That's bullish. How we're doing on new lows? Ticked up a little bit today, minimum, but it is benign. We're at eight and we're at sixteen, below fifty. This is benign. Market crashes occur when we're in the in the mid hundreds, right? Five, six, seven, eight hundred to over a thousand. Definitely not the case. So this is also supporting further upside and that would find the market. Um, let's see here on Monday, we already got the buy signal for the PMO, also supporting higher prices. Yesterday continued, today will continue as well. So this one also supports higher prices. How are we doing on AD line? All right, the AD has now moved above the late November high and which also gives us um, the notion that we're going to go higher. AD often leads price. So the market has not moved yet above the late November high, right? We're still not there yet. Uh, neither has the S&P 500, uh, certainly not the NASDAQ, uh, NASDAQ 100, and neither has the Dow Jones. We're still below it, okay? We're still below the November, December uh, highs. Depends a little bit on where each index topped out. So if we assume here, we have the December high, November high, we're still below it, but the AD line is already making new highs. That is good. That is bullish. It most of the time leads price. So this also suggests we're going to go above those highs. All right. That supports our bullish wave count over the intermediate term. How we're doing on the McClellan oscillator measures how many stocks are advancing and declining and then uh, takes the difference of it. And when it's positive, it means much more stocks are advancing. 74, good. Bulls are in charge. The positive divergence here in late December uh, rang in really well, and we're moving higher. This is good. At some point, this one will go too high, and we need to pull back because things cannot go up forever. Uh, as such, we have now a buy signal on the summation index. Summation index adds yesterday's reading to the PMO to that of today, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So also this one supports higher prices. There. McLaren oscillator is positive. The summation index is on a buy. The PMO is on a buy. The AD line is uh, is making new highs before it price does. Bullish percent index is very uh, bullishly divergent. New lows are benign. That's honestly a good recipe for higher prices. And if we see a pullback, that should then be our wave two. And then we should be on our way for eventually wave three, the larger third wave. And I still think we can reach 4,300 plus. I have not changed my tune. And that will only happen when we start breaking below the December lows with, of course, subsequent warrants prior to that. 
Uh, again, the Dow Jones topped and bottomed to see where it had to. So now we should ideally rally a little bit higher. We're trying to elucidate if we are in three and a four and a five are yet to come, or are we already in five? Um, I would argue for we are already in five. It matches a little bit better uh, with uh, where things topped and bottomed and what we've seen so far um, for several index NASDAQ Dow Jones. And again, if we break, of course, below the December lows, all bets are off, but things are moving higher quite decisively. I like it. So I remain bullish. I still of the, are of the opinion we are going to move much higher for this year in a larger counter trend rally that started in October of last year. And after that, we should move decisively lower again. And after that, we should decisively move higher again. So please understand the environment we're in, small term, big term, intermediate term. And I think I have covered everything I could cover in these short 20 minutes. Take care, trade safe. See you all on Friday. Bye.